Okay, boys and girls, so I had a couple of requests to um, redo Squanto, so we were at Squanto in the Englishman, so that is where I'm going to start. So, it was a day of feasting in the village. More Indians came from their homes in the woods. More white men came from the ship. Captain George Weymouth gave the chief a present. It was a string of blue beads. The chief was pleased. He put the beads around his neck. He and Captain George Weymouth sat on a deer skin in front of the chief's house. The other white men sat near them. Some of the Indians said to each other, These men look very strange. They have strange magic, said Squanto's mother. I wish they would go away. They do not mean any harm, said Squanto. They only want to trade with us. I wish they had stayed in their own land, said Squanto's mother, and she went into the house. An old man of the tribe brought out his drum. He played, and some of the young Indian men danced. They made so much dust that the chief told them to stop. Charles Robbins wanted to play the drum. He tried, but he did not know how the Indians laughed, and he laughed back at them. When the feast was over, Squanto walked back to the shore with the white men. He looked at the ship in the bay. He said, I would like to ride on such a ship. Charles Robbins said something to Captain George Weymouth. They both looked at him and nodded their heads. Charles Robbins spoke to Squanto in the Indian language. Tomorrow we go, he pointed to the north. You come. Squanto looked at the white men. He looked at the ship. He did not know what to say. You come, said Charles Robbins. Then he and the other white men. So here's the picture. got into a small boat. They rowed away towards the ship. Squanto ran all the way back to the village. He told his mother and father, the white men went, want me to go with them tomorrow. He want me, or I'm sorry, they want me to go to the ship. His father was pleased. It is good, he said. We will tell the chief. The chief was pleased too. There is much to learn from the white men. He said, and you can help them, Squanto, when they trade with other tribes along the shore. You know the language of the tribes. You can talk for the white men. Squanto went back and forth through the village. He told everyone he met, I am going on the great ship. His mother said, I wish you would not go. Why? asked Squanto. Life is good here, said his mother. The woods are full of game, the sea, and enough to eat for all of us. Our tribe is happy and strong. Why do you want to go? It is for us just a little while, said Squanto. I will come back. If you go, said his mother, I may never see you again. Why do you say that? asked Squanto. It is something I feel in my heart, she said. Be quiet, said Squanto's father. It is good that he should go, and the chief wishes it. Squanto's mother bowed her head and said no more. In the morning, the white men came back. There was trading in the village. The white men traded beads, knives, and cloth for the animal skins the Indians had. Charles Robbins pointed towards the ship and asked Squanto, You go? Yes, said Squanto. The white men took their animal skins down to the shore. Most of the Indians in the village went with them. Squanto got into the small boat with the white men. They rowed out into the bay. Squanto looked back at the people on the shore. He saw his father and mother. His mother had her hands over her face. Squanto thought she is sad, and he was sad too. But when the ship sailed, he forgot he had been sad. It was an exciting time. The men ran back and forth. They pulled ropes and shouted at each other. Squanto looked at the big sails high over his head. He saw them swell as they caught the wind. He felt the ship move. It was a wonderful ship. And the white men who had made it were wonderful. It was true what the chief had said. He could learn many things from them. As the days went by, the ship sailed up along the shore. Squanto began to learn the language of the white men. He learned that they were English from the land of England far away. Charles Robbins told him the names of the days and months. All the days and months have names, he said. All the years have numbers. Last year was 1604. This year is 1605. There were too many names and numbers for Squanto to remember. He wished the white men would not try to teach him so many things at once. But everyone on the ship was good to him. They spoke kindly to him. They gave him food and clothing. He was proud to think that he could help them. When they stopped to trade with the Indians, Squanto went ahead to each village. The white men are coming, he would say. They are good men and want to be your friends. They have fine things to trade with you, so bring out your best skins to show them. Charles Robbins told Squanto one day, We are going back to England soon. The captain would like to take you with us. England? Me? said Squanto. 
We want the people of England to see you. Everyone in England has heard of Indians, but not many have ever seen one, said Charles Robbins. You can stay as long as you like and come back on another ship. Squanto's eyes shone. Yes, he said. He would cross the great ocean. He, Squanto, the Indian boy, would be the first of his people to see the land of the white men. Yes, he said again. Yes, yes. London. Okay, this is a new chapter. Squanto wanted to go back to his village before the ship sailed. He wanted to tell his people he was going to the land of the white men, but the ship was a long away from the village. There was no time for him to go. Talk to the Indians on the shore, said Charles Robbins. Tell them you are going to England. They will talk about it and the word will get to your people. Squanto nodded. It was a good plan. That day he talked to the Indians on the shore. He told them he was going to the land of the white men and would come back soon. The next day the ship sailed. At first Squanto was happy, but as the days went by he grew tired of the ocean. He grew tired of eating salt fish and biscuits and beans. He wanted to see land again. Charles Robbins told him stories to help pass the time. He told him of kings and queens. He told him of the big city of London. The stories were hard for Squanto to understand. There were so many words in them and he did not know. Sometimes he was cross because he could not understand. Some... Sometimes he was sad because there was so much he did not know. Day after day went by. One morning, a shout went up. Land! Squanto and Charles ran up on deck. Look, Squanto, Charles pointed. Far away, there was a small dark spot. It was like a little cloud between the ocean and the sky. It's land. Can you see it? Yes, yes, said the Indian boy. I see. And he was happy again. It was a rainy day in autumn when the ship came in sight of London. Squanto stood on deck with Charles as they sailed up the river. Look at all the ships, said Charles. They come here from all over the world. Squanto was not looking at the ships. He was looking at the city. There were so many houses so close together and such big houses. There were chimneys everywhere with black smoke pouring out of them. The ship passed a great tower rising above high walls. This is the Tower of London, said Charles. Long ago, the kings of England lived here. Oh, see, cried Squanto, the deer. Deer? Where? asked Charles. Oh, they are not deer. They are horses. They are pulling a carriage. And look, there is a man riding a horse. Squanto's eyes were wide. He tried to see everything at once. He began to feel afraid in such a place with all its streets and houses. How could he ever learn to find his way? He kept close to Charles. He was close to him when they left the ship and set foot in the city of London. He felt strange. The houses and streets seemed to be moving. He took a few steps and fell down. Charles helped him up. Don't be afraid, he said. We are used to walking on the ship. Now it's hard for us to walk on land. We'll have to get used to it all over again, but it won't take long. People crowded around them. Someone said, these men just came from the new world. Did you find gold in America? asked an old man. People looked at Squanto, a savage, they cried, an Indian from America. They crowded closer. Charles held up his fist, out of my way. He pushed Squanto through the crowd. He pushed him into a carriage and jumped in after him. He shut the carriage door. The carriage began to move. Two horses were pulling it down the street. A man sat on a seat outside and drove the horses. Squanto tried to look out the window. He could not see much. Rain was running down the glass. We are going to my mother's house, said Charles. Squanto, do you remember how I taught you to bow? Squanto nodded. When you meet my mother, bow to her and say good day, ma'am. Can you remember? Again, Squanto nodded. The carriage stopped before a wooden house with a roof that went up to a point. Charles and Squanto got out and went to the door. Charles knocked. A woman opened the door. She was little and old. Her cheeks were pink and her nose turned up. Charles, she cried. It's you. It's really you. Charles went inside. Squanto went in after him. The woman cried out, mercy on us, a savage. Mother, this is Squanto from the New World, said Charles. Squanto bowed low. Good day, ma'am, he said. Mistress Robin's mouth fell open. Well, good day to you, she said to Charles. He doesn't sound like a wild man. He doesn't look like one either. Don't be afraid of Squanto, said Charles. He is my friend. Be kind to him and he will be your friend too. And now may we have some food. I am starving. Squanto must be starving too. Mistress Robbins looked at Squanto. Does he eat the same things we do? Charles laughed. Try him and see. 
They sat down at a table. They had mutton and bread and plum, jam to eat and tea to drink. Squanto ate everything on his plate. He could have eaten more, but there was no food left. Charles told his mother about the new world. While he talked, the room grew dark. The hot tea and the heat of the room made Squanto sleepy. His head began to nod. Come, said Charles, I'll take you to bed. He took a lighted candle and led Squanto upstairs and into a large room. There was a fireplace in the room. Charles lit the fire. He opened a chest and took out something that looked like a long white sack. There were buttons down the front. Here is one of my old night shirts, he said. You can wear it to bed. He helped Squanto into the night shirt. He turned the covers down and Squanto got into bed. Go to sleep, said Charles, and he took the candle away. Squanto curled up in bed. He turned from one side to the other. The pillow under his head was too soft. He pushed it off the bed. Still, he could not sleep. The whole bed was too soft. He kicked the covers off. He got up and lay down on the floor close to the fireplace. In a little while, he was asleep. I hope you enjoyed our adventure today about Squanto. So we will next time read about the Indian show. Hope to see you guys soon. Bye.